Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. In this tutorial we will make this Pierre's blouse. Uh, Pierre's is from um, the name of the yellow butterfly or garden butterfly and I thought that it will be a nice name. But first of all we will talk about the structure and the construction of this uh, Pierre's blouse. And I have here the sketch. <coughs> And I will tell you how this uh, blouse is worked and what to measure if you want to make this in a bigger size or in your own uh, using your own measurements. So first we are working the sleeve and uh, we will use two different stitch patterns for one for the sleeve and one for the trunk. So you will need to swatch first with your yarn and your needle both stitch patterns if you want you can check the written pattern in, uh, on my website and you'll see the stitch pattern for both if not you'll see it in this uh, tutorial further and after swatching you will need to measure uh, the length from neck to cuff this will give you the length of the sleeve for the Pierre's blouse but uh, after measure, measuring the neck to cuff length then you'll have to approximate about half of that length to be the length of your sleeve so for example I had my neck to cuff was uh, 73 centimeters and the length of this actual sleeve is 36 centimeters so after having this length then you'll know how many and having the swatch of course you'll know how many chains you will need for the length so the number of chains the foundation chain will give you the length of the sleeve and the number of the rows the width then you'll have to measure the width that you will need for your sleeve so this is on the sketch is with B so for this you'll have to measure from the shoulder up to uh, the center of your chest but be careful to get uh, lower a bit because the sleeve has to cover your bust so having that uh, that width uh, you will have to uh, multiply that length with two because we are working the front and back panel uh, the back sleeve as well and then you'll have the width now you have uh, your swatch you know how many uh, stitches you will need to start with and then you know how many rows to make to complete the sleeve uh, for the stitch pattern for the sleeve you will need to uh, have a multiple of 10 stitches so have this in mind when you are calculating the number of stitches that you will need for the sleeve and you'll have to repeat the pattern twice to have two sleeves then after completing the sleeves you'll have to place them like you see in the in the sketch to get that uh, v-neck uh, line so both the um, both uh, corners of the width after folding the sleeves uh, um, in two has to be joined and then you'll have to apart the uh, top corners to make that v, uh, v neckline and then you'll have to go with your measuring band lower on the length of the sleeve and see from where to where you will have the desired um, width for your bust or your more preeminent part of your body because not all the bodies are the same maybe you'll need to um, uh, have in mind the uh, width of your waist why not so there where you have the needed width you will have to place stitch markers because there you'll have to start working on the trunk the trunk is worked perpendicular with the stitches of the um, sleeve and we will join as you go so you can uh, work both parts separately and then stitch them together but I prefer this uh, this method instead and the trunk will be worked half front then uh, the back of the same side will be work starting from the stitches of the front uh, side and then we will join we will use a lace join with a crochet hook to join the middle 
uh, part. I didn't want it to work one front panel uh, completely because this will mean to increase and then decrease to create that uh, that triangle under the bust and for simplify this pattern I said that better to just increase and then to join the parts together if it looks like uh, it's uh, weird well, you'll see in the in the pattern and in the tutorial further that is actually looking pretty good with that joining, and um, with this you don't need to use the needle almost at all except of waving ends. So now another aspect when starting to work on the trunk of course that you'll have to make a chain for that uh, length of the trunk uh, trunk and uh, you'll have to <coughs> see uh, with both sleeves in that position in the final position which will be in the length that you desire and then to measure the length from the top corner so from the shoulder up to where you want your uh, blouse your length blouse length to be and then you will see how many stitches you will need to add to complete that length for the trunk but for this you will have to swatch in the stitch pattern for the trunk as well which is with half double crochet and uh, mesh stitch in half double crochet because it might uh, be different than the sleeve uh, pattern swatch so I hope everything it makes sense this maybe will help you to customize this blouse as you need this tutorial will be for size small is the uh, size that I'm wearing is uh, a bit oversized so if you want a closer fit you and you are a M size maybe you will want to use it you can find all the measurements in centimeters on my website as well and you can uh, use that as a guide so now we will start working on the Pierre's blouse and let's see what materials we will need so I use this sport with yarn which is called rainbow bamboo from hobby It's the older version of rainbow bamboo they change a bit the skein into ball and also the label but I think it's the same yarn so this is a sport with the recommended needle is 3 3.5 millimeters but we will use a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook to have that nice drape of the blouse you can use for this any cotton cotton blend yarn also for for all the um, edging we will use a smaller crochet hook and now as I said we will start with the sleeves I will work a small um, swatch here just to show you the stitch pattern but for the size small you will need to chain 131 stitches so as I said you will need a multiple of 10 plus 1 stitches to make the stitch pattern for the sleeve and now we will chain the needed number of stitches And when you have the needed number of stitches, point the last stitch and then chain six more. So this is three, which is the double crochet at the beginning, then three more chains as separating chain. And now for the pointed stitch, so you should have seven stitches, this will be seventh stitch, you'll count three because you have to skip three. So basically in the 11th stitch from the hook you'll need to work a single crochet. Then we will chain one, skip the next stitch and work one single crochet into the next one. Chain three, skip the next three stitches and work one double crochet into the next stitch chain three 
skip the next three stitches and work one single crochet into the next stitch. Chain one, skip one, one single crochet in next. And this is will be the section that we will have to repeat. So now chain three, skip three stitches, one double crochet until the end of the round. Now skip three, one single crochet, chain one, skip one and one single crochet. And you'll have to end up the row with chain three and one double crochet into the last stitch. And we will start second row, which will be one of the repeated row. So chain one, one single crochet into the first stitch, then chain three, and go into the one chain space between the two single crochet and make a double crochet. Chain three, go into the th uh, three chain space but right before the uh, double crochet and make a single crochet. Chain one, skip the double crochet and into the next three chain space make another single crochet. And now we will just repeat until the end of the row. And we will finish the row with chain three, skip the next three chain stitches and in the fourth make one single crochet. And now we will start row, row three. So this was the row two and we will chain six. Then go right before the double crochet and make a single crochet. Then chain one, skip the double crochet and make a single crochet after the double crochet. And now we will repeat. The stitch pattern is the same on uh, each row, only that it starts and ends differently. But the stitches are worked in the same places with each row. And when we need to finish the row, we will chain three and work one double crochet into the last single crochet. And this will be the two rows that you will have to repeat until completing the width of the sleeve. In total we will work for size small 43 rows. And of course that you'll have to repeat the same pattern for both sleeve. So start with 131 stitches and work 43 rows. So we completed the uh, two sleeves and this is how you'll have to place them. So fold them in half and then join the bottom corner to create that v-neck. And this is the triangle at the bottom that I was talking about and where you will have to measure the width of the trunk that you will need. So you'll just have to place the measuring band where you will uh, have the knitted width. But before that, 
we will start working an edge on those uh, sleeves because we will work the trunk uh, and joining the rows of the trunk into the sleeve stitches and to be uh, easier to identify those stitches and not to uh, get lost into chains because we are working into the side row then we will work that edge in single crochet to be easier to um, have those stitches more visible and if it's something just to adjust the number of stitches in that edge and then we will um, start working on the body so but this is uh, just to show you the sleeves because then we will work separately on them and it will be easier to just have an uh, idea how the sleeves will be placed to so just calculate and measure everything that you need so I have now the sleeve and this is the edge we will have to work on both sides because uh, one half of the sleeve will be the front panel the front sleeve and the other one will be the back of the sleeve I'm using a smaller crochet hook this is a four millimeter crochet hook that I'm using but you can use even a smaller one because those chains those double crochet tend to be um, uh, smaller in uh, length as the single crochet stitches and the pattern for the edge will be to work two single crochet into the side row with double crochet stitches or chain stitches where you'll have three chains at the end of the row or a double crochet there you will need to work two single crochet so not three not one into each uh, stitch but two and then into the single crochet side row you will work one single crochet so basically at every three uh, at every two rows you will have three single crochet and this will mean uh, especially for this size because we have 43 rows uh, that we will have six, 66 stitches at the end so this is one side you will have to do the same edge on the other side because you will need an edge for the back panel so you need to have 66 stitches say that using a 4 millimeter crochet hook the edge is still waving so you can even use a smaller one because this pattern is with a lot of chains and you can use uh, even a smaller crochet hook so we will start doing the same edge in single crochet on the other side and then we will start working on the trunk on the actual trunk but you'll have to do these edges on both sleeves and this edge again is on the side rows so on the sides of the sleeves the side of the rows that we work and so and not into stitches into the foundation stitches or <laughs> the stitches of the uh, from the uh, last row so let's just complete this edge and then uh, we will start working on the trunk okay now that you we have the edges we can start working on the trunk so this is the position that the sleeve will be and as I measured for my size I need to uh, start with the trunk counting from the end of the sleeve 16 stitches and after 16 stitches I will place a stitch marker because this is where I will start working on my trunk 
and you'll have to count on both sides front and back to have the same number of stitches and I will place the stitch marker joining both sides so the sixth stitch from uh, back and the sixth stitch from uh, from the front So now I'm making sure that I have the same number of stitches on both sides. This uh, is my case, 16 stitches, but you'll have to count the number of stitches needed uh, depending on where on the length of the sleeve you will get the, that, that uh, width that you need for the blouse. So now I'm placing a stitch marker joining both parts and this is where in the stitch after it is where I will have to start working on my uh, body so I uh, had left because I told you we will have 66 single crochet on the edge of the sleeve so I have left 50 stitches be careful when you let those stitches because you will need two stitches per row and you will need to have for the trunk an uneven number of rows. Now we will chain rejoin yarn through both sides and chain 21 or the needed uh, chains to get to the length that you need for the blouse. And starting with the third stitch, half double crochet into each stitch except the last one. We will need to do increases um, at the end of the row where it's joining with the sleeve to have that triangle shape. So just half double crochet into each stitch except the last one because into the last one we will do an increase. Okay, so into the last stitch you will need to work three half double crochet. Then we will skip the next stitch from the sleeve and we will work three slip stitches. So one slip stitch into the next three stitches. The first slip stitch is to connect the current row and the next two is for the to rise up for the next row. Then chain one and turn and make one half double crochet into the first stitch. Then chain one, skip one and one half double crochet into the next stitch. And we will repeat this up to the end of the row. Now we will chain two and turn <coughs> and we will work into each one chain space two half double crochet except the last one. In the last one we will need to increase again.
So into the last space we will work three half double crochet. Then skip one stitch from the sleeve and slip stitch into the next three. Chain one and turn. One half double crochet into the first stitch. Chain one, skip one, one half double crochet in next. And we will repeat until the end of the row. And these are the <coughs> two rows that we will need to repeat and in completing and getting at the end of the sleeve we had 50 stitches to work for the cr trunk this means that we will have 25 rows so we will end up with a half double crochet row so to finish the row so we are at the last row here so I just need to make the last increase into the last one chain space. I need to make one more half double crochet and then I will skip one stitch and then connect that row with the last stitch that I have. And this is the half of the trunk one panel. So I think it's looking pretty nice. You can work the same pattern but try to um, uh, the same pattern and then to stitch this piece with the sleeve if you find more comfortable to do so. So this is how it's looking until now. And now for the back panel we will start working into the foundation stitches of the, this front panel where we started and let's flip this and we will work basically the same pattern only that uh, we are not making the chain at the beginning we will just simply go into the foundation stitches of the front panel And this uh, will be worked and uh, rows will be connected on the wrong side of the sleeve. Uh, this will mean that these uh, pieces over here will have a slight different look of the stitch pattern because they are looking, these half double crochet rows are looking a bit different on front and wrong side. But it will be uh, just not visible at all. So we will connect the yarn into the first stitch that we have here and we will start to half double crochet into each stitch except the last one in which we will have to do the increase the same as we did on the front. I'm uh, making the half double crochet stitches between the half double crochet um, that I have on the front because I found it easier than to work exactly into the chain stitches.
So into the last stitch we will work three half double crochet and it's easy to figure it out because you already have those three half double crochet that you work on the front and we will connect the rows in the same way but first let's just do the three half double crochet into the last stitch and then we will do the same, skip one and slip stitch into the next three stitches then chain one and turn one half double crochet into the first stitch chain one, skip one, one half double crochet in next and continue until the end of the row So by mistake I just work with one half double crochet in plus but I will check to see how many windows I have on the front and then I will make sure that I have the same number of windows on the back okay so I need only one so I will half double crochet into the last stitch chain two two half double crochet into each one chain space except the last one and into the last one chain space work three half double crochet skip one stitch and slip stitch into the next three chain one and turn and we will repeat this uh, rows until we will complete this side of the trunk of the body you will need to have uh, the same number of rows as on the front panel so 25 rows in total in my case okay so now we have this half done and we will need to repeat the same uh, for the other half so this side is completed now you will need to work the same with the other sleeves or the other half of the blouse we basically have here half of the blouse and we will have to do the same on the other half and after completing both uh, sides we will see how to join them together into the middle this is how the joining is looking is looking super nice and I think that no stitching with a needle will get this result so it's pretty neat and really nice so these are both sides over here like this is how it's looking and we will join them back and front here in the middle and we will use a crochet hook and a lace stitch for joining for this so into the left side 
rejoin yarn exactly into the first stitch, chain 2 and then go into the right side the first stitch and make one half double crochet. Then going into the left side but skip the next stitch and work a half double crochet in next, go into the right side, skip one stitch and one half double crochet in next. And we will keep repeating like this until we will get up, up, up and both sides are joined. So this is how it's looking, it's basically creating the same uh, mesh stitch pattern as the rows that we have. So it's not visible at all, you cannot even uh, tell that this is actually a join, you can bet that is from the <laughs> stitch pattern, so it's pretty nice. And now to finish the row I will just work the last stitches here, but of course that I don't know why I'm off the screen and you cannot see it, but there are the, is the same what I'm doing until now only into the last stitches. And then to finish this up, you will just, uh, I will just slip stitch into this half double crochet over here and one chain to secure this and done. And now we will repeat the same joining. See how nice it is. We will repeat the same joining uh, on the other side, on the back side of this. And after completing everything, we basically have the blouse done. We have this uh, sleeve ends that are still open and of course that you can use the needle to stitch them up or because uh, this blouse was basically without seaming, even if we had multiple parts <laughs> to assemble but we uh, use only the crochet hook. So I will use the crochet hook uh, for these um, sleeves as well and I will join them using slip stitches. You can use a single crochet stitch if you want or anything that you find uh, easier. Even the needle if you want to stitch them up you can do it. So I will just slip stitch going with the hook into the both side stitches and I will join the sleeves just to make sure that I'm not getting any ends <coughs> because we will have a few ends to weave in with this blouse but yeah it has to be something that is not that pleasant to to make but I think it's totally worth it so now I will just slip stitch into those uh, stitches uh, <coughs> remained of the sleeve to just complete everything and then we will just need to um, we will just need to go into the finishing things that we will have to do with all the details of this blouse but the main blouse now is done after completing joining uh, these sleeves and uh, from now we will just need to add those details like the cord in the front, the um, lace chain pattern at the end, at the, in the back and of course before that we will need to work the edges. I uh, make sure that I'm getting into all the stitches to avoid having any holes. And 
and this is how the joining sleeve is looking. We will have to do the same with the other sleeve. And now we will talk about the neckline because we will have to make the edge for the neckline. We will use for all the edging only single crochet stitches and for all the edging neckline, bottom hem and uh, sleeves we will work three rows or rounds because this time will be in a round uh, in single crochet. I'm using a 4 mm crochet hook for the edging but I can tell you now because I already finished everything that after the first round I will use a smaller crochet hook and I recommend I use it right from the first row. So I will rejoin yarn into one shoulder not to have the um, joining of the rounds into the front to be as hiding as possible and the pattern for the this edging the same because we have a lot of chain stitches and if you are working one single crochet into each stitch this will be a bit wavy it's true that the edge of the blouse is wav wavy indeed but if we are working more rows this will not look really nice so I recommend to just uh, work two single crochet into the chain stitches where you have three chains so the separating chain from the pattern and then into single crochets double crochets to work one single crochet so only when you have three chain instead of three stitches how it's supposed to be you can uh, work only two stitches or of course this will depend a lot on, on your tension so in case you find it that it's looking nice and the stitches are even uh, even find a different uh, pattern for this but this is how I did it so I did it like two single crochet into the chains and one single crochet in the rest of the stitches. Now for the um, uh, corner or I don't know how to say it of the V uh, neckline we will just do a decrease in the middle so working three single crochet together we will work one single crochet into that half double crochet of joining one single crochet into exactly joining um, stitch and one single crochet into the other half double crochet and work those three stitches together and the same in the back and with all the th on all the three rounds that you, we are doing for the edge we will need to decrease those three stitches so the, to have the, that V nice and neat and uh, avoiding having the edge getting uh, basically bigger okay so I completed the first round and now as I said I will use a smaller crochet hook is a 3.75 millimeter or size F and I will start working on the row 2 with one single crochet into each single crochet and of course that in those corners of the V like I said we will work three single crochet together Okay, so here in the corner I will work three single crochet together and we will do the same in the back or in the front, the same decrease.
okay so this is the edge and now we will work the chain from for the front I think I chained in total 300 stitches but uh, of course that you can make it as shorter as as longer as you need you need and I place it from 6 to 6 stitches 3 times but you can go up if you need and I added a small tassel at the end to just uh, make this uh, cuter and I will show you of course how to make the tassels as well so you'll have to wrap the yarn ar around your index and middle finger then cut the yarn and then cut a small piece of yarn to use it to tie the at one end we will use this to connect us, uh, the tassel with the cord And now we will get a another piece of yarn and at one end of the tassel we will just tie this and then wrap it over a few times And then with the crochet hook, I'm using a 2.5 millimeter crochet hook, we will just pull this end under the wrapped yarn or wrapping yarn, like so. I'll just pull the ends a little bit to just make this loop a little bit neater so not to have uh, strands of yarn that are uh, getting out and now using those uh, ends we will just connect this tassel with the end of the into the first actually chain stitch of the chain then I will make a knot And then all these remaining ends, I will just take the two millimeter crochet hook and I will pull, pull them under the wrapping yarn on the top of the tassel. This in this way, I'm making sure that it's not getting out because this is pretty tight. And of course, it's a knot, so. I don't think it will fall apart <laughs> okay now I will pull the end again just to make sure that I don't have any uh, yarns that are getting out just a bit and then of course using uh, a good scissor you have to trim the ends um, to have everything nice and even like so and this was a tussle, you just uh, can add it or not, but I thought that 
uh, if you will see them on my core maybe you will want to see how I made them and now we will go into the back panel of the blobs and we will do the chain detail at the back as I said this is both functional and looking nice but you will need to make it and you don't have to skip the step because otherwise uh, the blouse will fall over your shoulders so I'm just counting six stitches from the middle of this v-neck and I will connect the yarn here work one chain and then one single crochet into the same stitch and then I will chain four and I will count on the other side same six uh, stitches and I will connect this chain that I made with the other side and this is basically what you will need to do until you'll finish this uh, chain detail but you'll need to increase the number of chains that you are making so to make sure that you reach the other side uh, and you will uh, repeat this a few times until you uh, feel comfortable with the blouse on you and you feel that it's uh, not falling well it will be a bit because uh, it's still it's an open v-neck and it's a wide v-neck but uh, as uh, far as you go with this chain and maybe with smaller chains you will get this v-neck uh, uh, smaller and not that open and of course the blouse would be um, will stay in place let's just say like this I don't know exactly how many times I went with uh, these chain stitches and I uh, well I could count it on the blouse but I don't have it in hand right now but you will have and it's not a pattern uh, really I just follow and connect this chain from six to six stitches this is the only pattern that I can tell and then with the number of chains I just adjusted the chain to make sure that I can reach the other side without stretching that chain too much and uh, not stretching the edges as well so just to be a natural um, say is not like pulling the the sides and uh, trying to get on the other side but the only pattern is like from six to six stitches you can do it even um, closer if you want and you will need to increase the number of stitches to make sure that you can reach the other side and connect the chain I will just end up here but uh, after making this video I realized that I need more chains so I just made a couple of more repeated a couple of more times and with uh, increasing the number of chain stitches um, that I had but this is how you will do this detail, detail on the back and now we will go with the uh, bottom hem edge I will just connect the yarn uh, into one side and we will work also single crochet stitches as the edging and of course uh, we will work the same number of rows as for the neckline but you can do uh, more if you want I'm using the 3.75 crochet hook for this edging and the pattern that I'm using it is making one single crochet into the window and then on the half double crochet side row I'm doing two single crochet stitches but according to your tension and uh, uh, you can follow any pattern you want as long as your stitches are even and edges looking nice not waving not too uh, to tie and after completing the this edging so this is the bottom we finish with the details on the front on the back uh, we will have uh, the uh, sleeves to complete and to make the edges on the sleeve so this is how the bottom edge is looking 
so we will need to work also on the sleeves the same edging and I think this will be the uh, last phase of this blouse of course after that you will need to wave in all ends uh, wash it block it and wear it with pleasure so this was with the Pierre's blouse tutorial I hope you like it and see you next time bye bye